Hi, this is Dr. Shweta Aratya. I'm from the Limitless Brain Lab and thank you to all the viewers who have been watching our channel. The purpose of this channel is making your brain healthy, fit, mental wellness, absolutely getting you to understand the very basic, I would say the nuts and bolts of the neuroscience. I love to talk to everybody, even to my patients, from understanding the power of this human brain. Some of you have written to me saying that, why don't you teach the very basic what the brain entails? What are the basic brain waves? How does the brain function? What is really happening? Now, I am going to teach very, very basic about the brain. Of course, I love neuroscience and I often say I have romance with the brain. I'm sure end of 10 to 12 minutes, I am going to transfer that romance because I am going to speak about some of the fascinating facts which absolutely has mind blown me for last so many years. And if you tell me today, can I treat kidney? Can I treat heart? Absolutely no. I'm absolutely fascinated by an every day. There is a new day in this journey with the brain. The real reason of teaching this very basic what is inside the brain is for two reasons. One is we have been studying peak performers, peak performers who have done exceptional things in life. We have been studying leaders. We have been studying people who have, despite all the challenges, done some amazing work. You and me have that same brain, same potential. It's a myth that Stephen Hawkins uses 5% of the brain or an X person uses 10% of the brain. We all use all the brain all the time. So what is inside those brains which makes them special? Or what is in, not inside our brain because of which we struggle? So understanding this basic neuroanatomy, understanding this basics about the brain makes a huge difference in our daily life. And that daily life can be very simply from sleeping well, to eating well, to even having the social circle right. Give, let me give you an example of a person called Dunbar. And Dunbar has done some amazing cognitive anthropology work. One of his work states that to have an effective brain, to have a well-developed brain, and he studied it in chimpanzees, to have that, you need to connect to five close people in your circle. He uh, gave us this number of five, which is beautiful. So you go from limited close contact of five to 10 in the outer circle, to 15, to 25, etc. This social connection strengthens the brain's connections. I'm not talking virtual. I may have a million friends on Facebook. I may have a one million followers on Instagram. That really does not account for, because for that brain to grow, for that brain synapses or the connections to flower, I need real people. I need that real social connect. So like these very simple, simple facts, but very powerful facts make our life easier make our life better. Now let's understand brain from a very different perspective. And I generally say it's like mathematics, you know, when we were young, and by the way, there's a lot of people struggling from math phobia. You know? they, they just don't like math. The real statistics is close to about 50% or 60% of the students. And of course, I was also one of those. I did not have phobia phobia, but then obviously it was fearful until I knew how to crack that formula. So it's all about learning that formula. Essentially, neuroscience is exactly about that. It is understanding that formula. Now, my vision is not to have those extended, yes, you can write big papers and you can have a lot of scientific dialogues. However, those dialogues remain in the library or in the modern day age, in the computers, on the PubMed. But what if we are able to extract simple things from that brain and bring it out to you for your daily living? That's why this is going to be very basic, very simple, but I want you to understand these nuts and bolts or nuances of the brain to make your life, everyday life, much easier. Let's understand the brain a little more. Firstly, do you want to guess the total number of the brain cells that a single brain has? Well, to your wild guess, it is in billions. It is roughly about 86 billion to 100 billion brain cells. If I were to count the total number of the cells every day, 24 by 7, I will need 
36 long years to complete the count. The memory capacity of the brain, if I were to extract all the memory capacity, you know, then I will have to stack an entire Burj Khalifa, which is the tallest building in the world. And despite that, the memory capacity will not have finished. 2.5 petabytes. One petabyte is a million gigabyte. And this brain, as it is growing, and I will talk about it in my Garbha Sanskar, this also, it is absolutely growing with rocket speed. In the last trimester, when the woman is pregnant, there is a quarter million brain cells happening per second. Quarter million per second. Between the age of zero and seven, and particularly zero and three, the connections, what we call a synapse, the connections between the brain is seven thousand synapses a second and that is the reason for all those parents listening do not waste a single minute with your child give as much of sensory experiences as much of things that you can in terms of touch smell uh, vision uh, different different exposures when the child is young because the brain is seeking all those sensory experiences so very important to understand very simple facts but powerful facts learning we all thought that learning would stop after a certain age that's not true with the brain there are something called the progenitor cells or cells which actually grow continuously grow over the period of time and that is nothing but neuroplasticity. So I, at the age of 40, cannot say, oh, I cannot do this because now my brain has reached a certain limit. We used to believe that, but that's a myth. We all can continuously grow the cells. The brain is composed of seven different networks. Because those networks are a little difficult to understand, let me teach you two very simple aspects of understanding the brain. Firstly, there are three basic brains. One is the brain stem, where my breathing is happening. Second is the limbic system or the emotional system. Most reptiles, most animals have a larger limbic system and a smaller frontal cortex. This frontal cortex is very, very unique to human beings. It is the seat of humanness. This prefrontal cortex or the frontal cortex allows us to modulate emotions, judgment, understand good and bad, attune communication, morality, mood regulation. I may get angry if somebody says an X thing, you know, but if I have a well-developed prefrontal cortex, I can modulate my anger. I can keep my emotions under control. So building that prefrontal cortex is the journey that you and me have to take in the context of evolution. Most people are stuck in that limbic processes because as the thing is coming, they want to react. They want to react because they want to protect. Remember this, reaction for protection. But the moment you go up in the frontal cortex, you start to respond. You start to modulate, you start to predict those responses. And that maturity sort of sets in, which helps you to de-stress, which helps you to sleep better, which helps you in overall health. Now. Understanding the brain's growth, its potentials, the things that you do impair it or repair it. So I always say there are four fundamental pillars of a brain health or brain's wellness. Self-discovery. Do you know how much of your prefrontal cortex is developed? Do you understand how much of the peak performance habits that you have in your life? Can you measure that? Answer is yes. How do you measure that? I'm going to come to that, yes, but you can read it in the comment section below. That's the vision of the, uh, of the Limitless Brain Lab. We do very simple analysis with the EEG, electroencephalogram, to make you understand what are the features in the frontal cortex, in the limbic system, how is the symmetry between the two sides, how are the brain, how are the brain areas talking to each other, because this is the essence of peak performance. Peak performance is nothing but de-stress performance. I just come, I just do things, I'm not overwhelmed, I don't have to overthink, everything happens smoothly, and I'm going to talk about that in one of the other videos as well. So hang tight on this channel for these amazing stuff and insights. The very important third thing when it comes to the brain health is the, the fundamental pillars is just discovery. Second is recovery. Are there some areas which are not functioning well? Because in the brain, everything is stacked. If I'm looking at a face, I, I have a special area denoting that face. 
I had a patient, you know, he just lost the ability to recognize the faces and he, she would just say, oh, I don't think so, he's my husband. So that is possible. The facial recognition has a special area, not just facial recognition. When I look at you and then I shift my attention to another thing, automatically your image should go away from my brain in milliseconds, in micro, micro milliseconds. But if that remains, we call it palinopsia, then your image, I'll be seeing it in the other. In fact, I had a patient like that. He was a visual communication engineer. And he said, you know, uh, doc, I went to a house and then uh, the moment I entered the house, my dog approached and then my wife approached. As soon as I was able to shift the attention from the dog to the wife, the dog's image did not go away. And as though the dog was wearing all the jewelry and ornaments and, you know, it was very disturbing because I was not able to see the wife. So this is a real case, real example. What is happening is in a particular area in the brain, there is the image which is not getting transferred. The image is not getting moved. So that is what is the power, how each of the areas in the brain is so well structured and orchestrated. Looking into the mirror, there are people who can go to the mirror and do not identify as themselves. So mirror agnosia can happen. So I had a patient who once said, you know, she would just break all the shining surfaces. She would go and break the car uh, mirror. She would go and break the mirror. Why? Because she would think somebody is threatening her. It is not her face, but some other person's face. So the brain has these areas which are well documented, well marked and well studied for that particular function. So second is recovery. You want to recover if there is a damage in any of those. The third important pillar out of the four pillars as we discovered, we recovered is balance. Both sides of the brain are connected with a very thick band of fiber called the corpus callosum. It sort of, you know, builds, it, it bridges the two sides of the brain. Now, it is very, very important for the brain to talk to each other. And in one of my sessions, I'm also going to talk about how the brain's preferences on the left and how the brain's preferences on the right are very, very important. I had the fortune of working with Dr. Kobus Neetling and his lab for many years. And my latest book, Future Ready Now, talks about it even better in terms of understanding these preferences. We know that the left side of the brain is important in speech. It is very important in linear thinking, in structural organization, while right side is more for visuospatial. I look at certain things and I understand in the space. Right side is also very important from abstract creativity or understanding some form of literature or arts. However, both sides of the brain keep talking to each other. This balance is extremely important. And, and how do you know exactly to the point that I was talking that with the lab's functions, we have developed this particular understanding from the electroencephalogram to understand how the brains are talking to each other. Our next My Limitless Brain uh, entire product is going to be also talking about this balance because this harmony, developing the two sides of the brain is extremely important. This balance has been shown to be very good in peak performers. So your and mine job is not to have a loft-sided brain development. It's like I'm driving a car. I look at what is coming in the front, but I should also be aware about my blind spots. So understanding those strengths, understanding those weaknesses and trying to overcome and develop that. In the My Limitless Brain, we call it the flow and the grow. You want to flow in your strengths, however, grow in these weaknesses. Harmonization and balance is the third pillar. And the fourth very important pillar, which is about developing. What you need to develop. We have been talking about prefrontal cortex developments all over. And what are the ways in which you can develop that prefrontal cortex? Meditation, breathing techniques, uh, understanding and talking cognitively, even simply talking to the right person ha can make that shift. I have been very fortunate to have certain people like Dr. Mehta in my life who does programs such as cognitive metamorphosis, where you actually talk it out. You make your shift in that prefrontal cortex simply by understanding by insights. What are the other ways? There are many other ways of cross-lateral training or neuromodulation. You want to modulate from point A to point B in the brain. Neurofeedback, there are so many techniques to do that. You can opt for modern techniques, you can opt for ancient techniques. Yoga Nidra is one of such techniques. 
Since I'm on the point of Yoga Nidra, my next video is going to be on Yoga Nidra as well. However, just to summarize that brain is a very, very powerful unit which can allow you to function better in life. Psycho, neuro, physio, immuno, endocrinology. I like to say it as a wrapper. Psycho, neuro, physio, immuno, endocrinology starts with the mind, goes to the brain, goes into your body's hormonal system and then your immune system as well. Fixing this can fix pretty much everything in your physical life, in your outside life, in your material life, in your relational life. But to fix anything, it's like, you know, I just had these new lights uh, which just got delivered yesterday. I looked at those lights and I'm like, oh my God, it's too overwhelming for me. How do I fix it? I have two options. I go and read the manual, which will give me all the details about it, or I contact an expert. And today I had the expert, he could fix it within 10 to 15 minutes because that is not my core skill. The similar way, we are born, we are not born with a manual, which, which will give me all the brain's functions. And I wish there was a manual, you know, I wish, however, the ancient textbooks, the scriptures, all the modern scientific papers, all the modern analogies of understanding different various experiments. This is the manual and you just need experts talking to you in the right context about the brain's growth just by getting the transcript, just the, the, the essence of it, delivering it to you in the simple language so that you can develop your brain. So please do discover your potentials, develop them, balance them and recover them. Have an absolutely fantastic life, joyous and happy just by learning to understand that manual or going to that expert and fixing it for good for life.